Hi guys, welcome back. Got another style video for you here. In this video, we're gonna be installing the Pioneer Touch Probe System, uh, the OPS 30. It's an option that you can order with the machine and it comes installed, or you can purchase it later and install it yourself. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, this will probably be a two or a three part series. Um, in this video, the first, we're just gonna um, install the system. We'll go through the we'll go through the contents of the boxes, obviously, and install the system and and make sure that it's functional. Uh, I believe in the second part we will go through the included macros that come with all the machines, and then the third uh, the third part will be the new updated um, screen sets that are not released yet, but I do have them here, so we can um, you know I can show you how to use those. So I think that's what it'll be. Maybe it'll change. Um, Kind of the steps of this will be the first the first step in this video we'll go through the contents of the box um, i'll show you guys everything that it comes with and then uh, go over to the machine and actually install it so it's not too bad um you got to drill three holes run some wires and um you know then check the controller to make sure it's functioning so that's what we're going to do um let me get the camera turned around here we'll go through the boxes and then start the install all right, so this is the two boxes you get with it. Uh, touch probes in here, and then you have a hardware kit. So let's go ahead and open this up. Nothing too uh, exciting on there. So you can see here we got uh, mounting hardware, some wiring connectors. It's like an Allen wrench and a little wrench to install the uh, stylus. Here's the receiver. down here have the manual and then we have the uh, style instructions that are specific to the X7 Here we got the uh, got the stylus. Here's the probe, obviously, and then uh, a couple batteries. So kind of cool. Nothing too exciting. Let's see, these will be the instructions that we're following. Um, Obviously, I have looked at the before. Um, here's a couple of holes we've got to drill. I'm probably not going to follow these exactly as written. Um, there's a couple of things in here that I think we can do it an uh, easier or simpler way. So um, with that, let's get the camera set up over at the machine and uh, we'll get moving. All right, so uh, the first step that we're going to do is to drill the holes to mount the uh, receiver on the back of the uh, enclosure. The instructions show doing it from the inside. Um, I didn't feel like laying through the window or the door to do this, so um, I'm doing them on the back side because I have a cordless drill that's uh, small enough to fit in that space. But um, you can see here, I just uh, you know marked down the uh, required amount and then uh, moved over the 25 and the 35 using a square and marked the two locations, right? And then I'm going to use a snap punch to mark those and drill those. I'll set the camera up, but you're probably not going to really be able to see anything because um, it's such a tight space. But uh, to me, this is a lot easier than uh, what they say in the instructions than laying through the, you know, laying through the door over here or to the front of the machine. So obviously you can uh, adjust things the way you've you know, it's easier for you to do too. So um, let me get this uh, set up and then we'll drill those holes. All right, I know some of this is gonna to be tough to see, but we'll do the... All right, so we're gonna start with an eighth inch and then we'll move up to the uh, five millimeter. easy to get uh, 
pressure on that drill trying to stay out of the picture for the camera. Too bad. So you can see the uh, two holes here. I just deburred them uh, real quick. Uh, the lower one is where the receiver is going to mount. And then a loop for the uh, cord for the electrical wire is there. And then the next step is to put an 18 millimeter hole um, up in this area right here. Um, so we're going to have to get up on top and uncover that wire trough and make sure that we're not drilling um, into wires. So that'll be the next step. So we'll get up on top of the machine and uh, disassemble that. I think there's 20, 20 screws you got to take out to get that cover off. And uh, then we'll drill, um, you know, drill the hole for the wire. So uh, give me a second, we'll reset, and uh, we'll show you that process. See, uh, you can see now on the wire trough, and what we need to do is we need to make sure that these wires are up out of the way when we drill that hole. Let me, uh, let me see if I can flip this around for you guys so you can see in here a little bit. All right, you can see uh, in here the wires um, in the trough. So what we need to do is you make, sh make sure that these are out of the way. We're going to be putting an 18 millimeter hole in about this area right here. Um, you know, they say drill it. I'm going to use a, a hole knockout, so drill in a smaller hole. Um, but make sure that these are out of the way. And this one, obviously, we have to uh, we have to drill from the inside. So that was another reason why I wanted to use a knockout. Uh, 18 millimeter hole is pretty big to drill, anyways, in this thin thin metal. So we'll get set up and we'll do that. All right, you can see up there. The hole's done. I had a little trouble getting that uh, die out of there, but uh, that's why it wasn't on camera. So hole's there, hole's there. Now we can set up and uh, mount the uh, receiver assembly. So let's go, uh, let's go over and do that. So I wanted to show you guys this real quick. So this is our uh, probe wire coming in, and then you can see it's it's quite long. So what you do is when you put it in this trough. You loop it all the way to the back, like that. And then when you get into the cabinet, as you need wire, you can just move it, and then you don't have a lot of extra and excess left off in, uh, you know, in the cabinet. All right, guys, I wanted to show you this before uh, I put it all back together, right? So here's our wire coming down from our probe. All right, coming across here. Right, sorry about what I'm hand holding the camera, right? So you can see there's our probe in, and then it corresponds to the uh, probe in on, on the controller. Our zero volts. And I couldn't do this. I couldn't connect these and film it at the same time. So I can get it to focus. Anyways, the zero volts. Our two plus 24s here. Our probe wire there. You can see it 
I can back this out. It corresponds to the probe wire up there. And then, uh, then our ground down here, right? So then we're gonna just tuck all these, you know, tuck all those in and put the uh, covers back on. And let me do that and then I'll bring you back. All right guys, so just a quick update on the uh, routing of this cable. I know I originally said, you know, I was gonna round it down this way, which I did. And uh, yeah, it gets so much interference from these controller cables and the motor cables, these orange ones especially. So when you put it in the trough up there, you need to try to keep it as far away as possible. And then uh, you can see I routed it down, down this way. And uh, keeping it away from those cables, uh, yeah, no problems. But um, um, all sorts of crazy stuff, you know, it flashing off and on, sometimes working, sometimes not working. But uh, yeah, it was all due to interference from uh, those colored cables. So anyways, you can see there, and that routing, uh, it works and functions perfect every time. So just take note of that. All right, so we're booted back up. <clears throat> we're gonna go to the monitor screen, and then in MDI mode, we're going to turn on the touch probe. So we need to enter, get this out of there, uh, M19, which will lock the spindle, and then an M80 to turn on the probe. All right, so you can see on the receiver, we've got three more lights lit up, right? So the first one is just the power, you saw that before. The second one is the touch probe. So it's saying, hey, it's communicating with the touch probe. The fourth one, which is not lit, but you can see the space, is um, for low voltage for the batteries. And then the, or the third one, and then the fourth one is um, a signal. So, and that has uh, red, yellow, and green. So, to make sure that it's func functioning, um, we need to go to the PLC screen. So we can hit settings and then uh, PLC status, um, the uh, input output bit right here. You can see we want to look at 18. And sometimes when you go to that, it's not up there. So you just, you hit the uh, input output and it brings it up. So I'll reach in and touch the uh, probe. Um, and you'll see that FF change to a zero when it gets the signal. Hopefully you can see all that. And, uh, and if that's the case, uh, if you're getting zeros, then you're good to go. So um, the next step would be to set up the calibration, which I'll do in the next video, but I wanted to show you a couple of things here. So if... Uh, go to the file monitor uh, or the file uh, manager page and go down to inch probe right so down here is our two calibrations um, you know one's the Z and then uh, uh, X and Y and then these are the different um, you know these are the different uh, excuse me macros that you have Measure the X phase, Y phase, Z phase, measure a hole, measure a slot, bulge, angle. So that's what I'll be going over in the next video is we'll, we'll, um, we'll calibrate it and then we'll go through each one of these macros and show how to use those macros. Um, let's go this screen. Third video, we have all of these um, new um, probe screens, right? So here's how to um, you know, calibrate it. Um, if you're doing a boss, excuse me, a boss there, a bore here, but you can see there's several pages, you know, here's finding an inside corner, finding an outside corner. So we have all these screens that we'll go through, but again, that'll be the third, that'll be the third video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a little disjointed, um, the video and, um, you know, having to video by myself and do some of these things. I cut some of it out. I hope, I hope it's uh, helpful. I um, appreciate you guys watching and liking and following and all that kind of stuff. So uh, be on the lookout for part two uh, at some point and then uh, part three after that. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.